Dion, you are going first. And the first topic today is we got LeBron versus Jason Tatum. Right now, who is better? Dion, it is on you first. The time starts when you start. Right. So we talk about LeBron James and Jason Tatum, who's better. you got to start off by saying how good LeBron James was in year 21. Right. So I'm going to tell you guys how good LeBron James was, and then we'll pick up from there. Right. So how good was LeBron James in year 21? Right. LeBron played 71 games, averaged 26, 7, and 8, shot 54% from the field and 41% from three. <clears throat> he did all that on five attempts. Only LeBron James and Kevin Durant averaged 25 points on 50% from the field and uh, 40% from the three. Now, when you also include LeBron James' assists, he's the only player in NBA history to do so, right? LeBron played 35 minutes per game. Uh, this year, eight, one out of eight times LeBron had a higher per 40 uh, out of 29. This is one of the eight years. Top three true shooting year this season, LeBron ended with a 63% true shooting, right? Only been hired twice in his career, and that was in Miami, where he shot around 64 to 65% true shooting. Also, his AST he finished top two in his career at 25.8. LeBron scored a total of 1,822 points for this season. He hasn't got over 1,700 since 2018 season, the same year he beat Taylor. Um, LeBron shot 73% in the restricted area while also shooting 41% from 25 feet. LeBron only missed two. LeBron only missed six dunks this year, and he's a 93% success rate at the dunk at, at dunking the ball. LeBron rises to the away games. He goes from 24 points at home to 26 points away. Um, and also, he's number two in um, fast rate points behind Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's yeah. Mmm. Hey, Dion coming out making a compelling case for LeBron. Jack, it looks like you got some work to do. Go ahead. Your time starts when you do. Yeah, that was uh, a lot of stats. But what I see with my very own eyes is the greatest basketball player of all time. And I'm not talking about LeBron James. I'm talking about Jason Tatum. OK, in the last three seasons, you have to look about you have to look at the game of basketball. You have to understand Tatum's been there. The Celtics have been there. They have been the team to beat for the past three seasons. You could not say that there is a better player in the game of basketball in the last three seasons other than maybe Jokic, I'll give you that. I would even give you Giannis, but he's been he's been very hurt. Jason Tatum has been phenomenal over the last three years, and that's what I'm looking at. But when you look at who is the better player right now, we got a prime example. They're both on the same team. Who's playing? Who's not playing? I get it. It's LeBron's team. They're calling it the Avengers. But there is a difference be, between being the best player, being the best role, being the best player that is your role, Steve Kerr has given LeBron James the best player role, but Jason Tatum is the best player on the team. I understand that LeBron James has earned the role to be the best player. That does not make him the best player on the team. He has the role of the best player. But listen, Jason Tatum is 26 years old. LeBron James is 40 years old. However old they, bo they both are, I look at them as very similar players. When you look at Jason Tatum, a lot of people say he looks like Kobe Bryant the way he plays. I see him more of a LeBron James. So who would you rather have an old LeBron or a guy entering his prime in Jason Tatum? Compelling cases for these two guys in round one. Dion, we're going to pick off round two right now. The time starts when you do. So I love how you asked the question of would you rather have an old LeBron or, or a, a younger LeBron James? So these are the things LeBron James done better than Tatum this season, right? So from field goal range, LeBron shoots 54%. Tatum shoots 47.1. LeBron James from the three-point line shoots 41%. Tatum shoots 37.6. LeBron James' assist total is eight a game. Tatum's only 4.9, so I'll give him five. LeBron James, what, he averaged five assists his rookie season. I mean, so the same year that Tatum's in, LeBron James was averaging around seven to eight assists. So I, I wouldn't compare Tatum to LeBron James. Let me keep going. Tatum's uh, steals, one. LeBron James, 1.3. LeBron James has a better turnover to assist ratio than Tatum. LeBron James efficiency, LeBron is 30 to Tatum's 27.6. Uh, field goals made, LeBron James is 9.6 to Tatum's 9.1. Despite Tatum taking more shots per game, LeBron's making more shots per game than Tatum. Um, per 48, LeBron clears about the water. I mean, it's pretty bad. LeBron James per 48 averages 35 points, 10 rebounds, 11 assists. 54% from the field and 41% from three compared to Taylor. That's only averaging 36 points, 11 rebounds and seven assists, 47% from the field and 38% from three LeBron James this season, not, not year 12, 10 LeBron this season. LeBron was top six in PER 
Tatum, 13th in PR. LeBron James is top three in fourth quarter scoring. Tatum, 17th. It, 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 it doesn't matter what A LeBron James is at. He just does more on the floor than Tatum, and it's just that. LeBron's better than Tatum now. He was better than Tatum back then. It's that simple. Mmm. Clear, cut, and simple. All right, Jack. Talk to us, my man. You know, I think you're throwing a lot of stats at me, but ultimately you just have to look at who who's the better basketball player in this current moment. Who would I rather have? And to me, you can't pass up on somebody that offers what Jason Tatum offers. We talk about Tatum not as a scorer, not as a passer, but as everything. He does it all. Jason Tatum, in many ways, is the perfect basketball player. I love to ask people, and I'll let you answer once my time is up, but does Jason Tatum have a weakness? I don't think he does. Everyone talks about all these different flaws. Before Jason Tatum won a title, it was, oh, Jason Tatum, you can't win a title. But there was never a single weakness that was brought up other than, oh, maybe he's too passive in big moments and Marcus Smart is taking big shots over him. Jason Tatum is a winner. All he's done is win since he's gotten into the league. He's had a Hall of Fame career in just seven years. I'm sitting here saying that LeBron James, as great as he is, Jason Tatum at the age of 26 has the chance to do what LeBron James couldn't do, and that is catch Michael Jordan's six championships because Jason Tatum was drafted to the Boston Celtics. LeBron James drafted to Cleveland. I understand that LeBron has bounced around, but I think when you're in consistent situations the way that Tom Brady was, if you're in a consistent situation, that's going to allow you to win and succeed at the highest level. So the second Jason Tatum was drafted to the Boston Celtics, I knew with the talent, he could develop into the player he is now, and this is not the best version of Jason Tatum. He will continue to get better, but LeBron James, Tatum, they're the same player. I would just rather have a 26-year-old version. All right, here we go. It is round three of topic one, LeBron James versus Jason Tatum. Who's better? Dion. it's time for you to make your closing argument. All right, so, you know, I've already told you guys about the things that LeBron James is better than Tatum at. Uh, you know, no narratives, you know, straight facts when it comes to this. Um, you know, another thing LeBron James has over Tatum, you know, 25 points, five rebounds, five assists games. LeBron 34 to Tatum's 27, even though Tatum played like four games more than LeBron James. Um, but the last minute, I want to just talk to you guys about some of the best moments LeBron James had this season. I'm going to start with the must win game, the last game of the season versus the Pelicans. LeBron put up 28, 11, and 17, plus five steals and a must win to put him in a good position for the playoffs. Or how about the, you know, game before LeBron James put up 37-9-5 against Memphis, uh, the game before that it was two must wins back-to-back. -back. And if that doesn't move you, we can talk about the 40-piece when he shot 9-10 for 10 from the three-point line, 90% from the three-point line, and he had Brooklyn on fire, right? So, so he was inside of Brooklyn, shot 9-10 for 10 from the three-point line. What an amazing job. And one of my all-time favorites in the last 37 seconds is obviously versus the Warriors when they went double overtime. LeBron James during that game put up 36 points. He dished out 12 assists, and also he had 20 rebounds. And don't forget, he was 100% from the uh, free throw line that, that game as well. Um, when you talk about these games and, and talk about battle-tested, there's nobody more you'll want in that situation than LeBron James. The heights of those games I just named to you, Jason Tam didn't even come close to even reaching those heights this season. I'm not talking about a year 16 LeBron James. I'm talking about a year 21 LeBron James had at least three to four games way better than Tatum could ever dream of. LeBron James this season got robbed of first All-NBA, and this proves it to you guys right here. Uh, Jason Tatum won the championship this year, and if you want to say that he didn't win finals MVP, then fine, but I think – Every championship is a collaborative effort, and in this year more than any, it feels like. It seems like in the past 10 years, or really all of basketball, it's been about the superstars. And in this year, we're talking about the Celtics after they've won the title, like they don't have the superstar. They have the superstars. It's Jason Tatum, it's Jalen Brown, and what they did this year was special as a duo, but it started with Jason Tatum. I want to point out that the reason for the Celtics' success, not just in this year, but over the course of the last seven years, being able to not trade Jalen Brown, trading Marcus Smart, acquiring Chris Stapps and Drew Holiday, having Derek White look like a freaking Hall of Famer. He is one of the best players on Team USA right now. That is all credit to him playing with Jason Tatum and Tatum making him better. Jalen Brown still being a second, still being a Celtic is all credit to what Jason Tatum has done in terms of his consistency. I understand that LeBron James is probably going to go down when he retires as the greatest of all time, if not the second greatest. But in this current moment, 
I say Jason Tatum is LeBron James, but he can shoot the ball. And Jason Tatum, it's it's hard to say what Tatum doesn't do good. To me, I think there are certain weaknesses in LeBron James's game. All right, there you have it. It's time to go ahead and run the poll right now and see who won the first topic. Let's get into round two. Um, in case you don't know, now you know. Round two will be the Lakers versus the Celtics, all-time franchises. Which one is greater? We got the two most storied franchises in the National Basketball Association. Dion, we started with you round one. So, Jack, I'm going to start with you on this one. Your time starts when you do. 18 is more than 17. And one team decided to hang an in-season tournament banner. Uh, that should tell you everything you need to know about this question. I understand the talent, the greatness that has been a part of the Los Angeles Lakers. I, there's no denying the amount of talent that has been on the Lakers roster. But you have to understand that in many ways, the homegrown championships are what are, are, are the greatest thing in the history of life. To me, the Celtics, with what they have drafted and built up, is a more impressive thing, especially since you have 18 championships versus the 17 championships. You have LeBron James. You have Shaquille O'Neal. You have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You have all these guys that went over to the Lakers, weren't drafted by them. And to me, the Celtics with the 18 championships, and I haven't even mentioned his name yet in this current debate, one franchise has Jason Tatum, okay? Uh, and the, it, it, not only does one franchise have Jason Tatum, the other franchise wishes they had Jason Tatum. They had a chance to draft Jason Tatum, but they're so distracted with the media and being in the spotlight of Los Angeles that they had to draft Lonzo Ball. Where is he now? I don't even know. Okay, so we need to understand the Celtics are the greatest franchise in the history of life because of their homegrown championships. What they've done in the last 10 years is beautiful because it's going to set them up for the next 10 years. What they did to start the NBA, it's a beautiful thing. And Larry versus Magic, it's a wash. All right, it's a wash. Dion, it's on you. Round all one. right, so first of all, before you talk about a great team, you got to talk about the great players on the team. I see you mentioned something about it, but I'm going to mention a little bit more to right now. Okay, so the ESPN official top 10 list. Now, I completely disagree with a lot of the lists of where the people are at on the list. But for the most part, it's a pretty solid 10, right? So at, at number 10, you have Shaq, you know what I'm saying, Laker. Uh, at number nine, you have Kobe, Laker. Uh, at number eight, you have Tim Duncan, obviously not a Laker. Larry Bird is the first Celtics on the list. At number seven, uh, Will Chamberlain at six is a Laker. Uh, Magic at five is a Laker. Bill Russell is the second one on the list at four. Uh, then you got Kareem at three is a Laker. And then also LeBron at two is a Laker. And you got MJ, right? So six to two of the Boston Celtics. I mean, it's literally in the top 10, it's Lakers compared to Celtics, right? Lakers got four of the six greatest players to ever live, to ever lace them up. Lakers got three of the five greatest players to ever live as well. Lakers' best duo, they have two of the three best duos in NBA history, and Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe, and they got Kareem and Magic, right? When you're talking about greatest teams, you got to mention the greatest players, and nobody has more greatest players than the Lakers, right? Uh, this is very important because this shows how great the franchise has been uh, over the last 10 years and it will continue to be. Um, and then also, they have another top 10 duo that's not even talked about right now in LeBron James and Anthony Davis. So they got three top 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 10 duos on the Lakers right now as we speak. All right, Jack, it's back at you. Round two, you got it. I would be mistaken if I left out Larry Bird in this conversation. I think what Larry Bird signifies for the Boston Celtics is everything. In many eyes, he's the greatest of all time. Although he wasn't the most athletic, didn't jump out the gym, what he was able to do, it almost reminds me of like a present day Nikola Jokic, the way that he just demoralizes teams and demoralizes players and and people watching Nikola Jokic, myself included, it's tough to watch Nikola Jokic with his unathletic ability just cook everyone. And that was Larry Bird. He was everything and more for the Boston Celtics. And if you're going to bring up all those players, to me, I think a lot of times one player can trump all. And in this case, Larry Bird, Larry Legend is that guy. I understand they had great players, but it's about 
championship teams, not championship players. And to me, I think championship teams, it has to go to the Boston Celtics. They're the greatest team of all time. And uh, to me, it's like Boston versus all. You never hear Los Angeles versus all. Everyone wants to go play in L.A. They get all the free agents, but nobody wants to go play in Boston. Everyone hates on Boston. It's Boston versus all. We do it our way. And not only are we set up for success in the future, we started it. We we were doing it in the middle. Then Jordan came in and we kind of had a little bit of a drought. Then we got it back. And although we acquired guys like Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen, those are no comparison to Shaquille O'Neal and LeBron James, and we still won a title. All right. It's back on you, Dion. Jack just cooked. Can you cook, Dion? Jack, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned drought because that was my next topic. I call <laughs> this topic the 16-year drought, right? So I want you to keep this number in your mind, 1976. And everybody, all the NBA fans out there know what 1976 is, right? It's the NBA merger. Since 1976 NBA merger, Lakers never went on a 16-year-old drought. Boston did from 2008 to 2024. Uh, Lakers, since the 1976 uh, merger, has won 11 championships compared to Boston six, right? Lakers three-peated once since that time period, and they also two-peated three times since the NBA merger, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing, since the NBA merger in 1976, that's a magic number, right? The Lakers are takes a 3-2 lead in head-to-head -head matchup against Boston Celtics. They beat them in 2010. They beat them in 1987. They also beat them in 1985, right? Boston Celtics has been irrelevant for the last 20 years since literally they won a championship this season. Lakers won five titles to Boston one in 2000 alone, right? Lakers being one of the biggest markets out there. I mean, acquiring players like LeBron James, Kareem, Shaq, Anthony Davis, right? Boston sat on two max contracts from like 2018 until they signed Tatum and all those guys. They sat on two max contracts for years and nobody wanted to go to their team. It's not only because of what Boston represents, it's how they treat their players, right? Right? So and the, the thing about it is, is when it comes to Lakers, man, the new era and the actual NBA since the NBA merger, they have dominated compared to the Celtics. Okay. The chef from Ohio has entered the building. <laughs> Shout out to chef from Ohio. Jack, it's on you for round three. It's your time to close off this debate right now. I don't feel like Dion has addressed the fact that one franchise has 18 championships and the other has 17 now mm. i and, and i don't know if he's allowed to speak right now but to me i think that's the elephant in the room here and that decides all because ultimately this game of basketball it's been going on for a while there's a lot of you know moving pieces and different changes in the games you just have to ultimately look at who has more championships Am I wrong to say that the 18 trumps the 17 and that, yeah, the Lakers had a bunch of great players, but they're in Los Angeles. The Celtics, they are the definition of basketball, team basketball, developing and having the best players. When you go to Boston, you become a better basketball player. When you put on that Celtics jersey, you become a better basketball player because you're surrounded with greatness. When you go to the Los Angeles Lakers, I don't really know if you're surrounded with greatness or just a bunch of chaos and spotlight. There's a whole lot of distractions in Los Angeles. Hey, I always tell kids that are, you know, 17, 18 years old that want to go play division one basketball, go to Gonzaga. What the hell are you going to do in Spokane, Washington, other than play basketball? It's about going to a place where you're going to win. And it's about basketball and playing in front of TD garden fans. Boston fans is way better than playing a bunch of celebs in Los Angeles. That's my opinion. Boston. Versal. All right, y'all. That's the end of Jack's last round. Dion, you got one more round for this topic. Lakers Appreciate versus that. Celtics. Go got ahead. It. Last minute and 30 seconds, guys. I wanted to talk to you guys about competition versus Lakers versus Celtics. I'm going to start in 1980. In 1980, the Seattle Supersonics coming off a championship recorded 56 and 26. They were third in the West and got smoked by the Lakers 1-4. Ironically, it's the same year Boston went 61 and 21 just to lose to Dr. J 76ers. The same 76ers that lost to rookie Magic Johnson in a 3 1, what's called, in, in game seven. Uh, in, what's called, in game seven, they lost to, uh, what's called, um, to, to Magic Johnson and the Lakers, right? So, or 
let's talk about the early 2000s when the Lakers had to deal with Tim Duncan, Manu, Tony Parker. From 2000 to 2010, seven out of the three championships came outside the West, right? So Lakers had to face teams like the Suns, the Mavericks, the Jacks, Timberwolves, the Spurs on any given night, right? The Lakers dominated in a much, much tougher era, right? And let's admit, the only championship that, the, that, that Boston got in 2008, they had, four, they had four superhumans on the team, right? So, so when they did win, they was basically better than anybody inside of the East, right? They didn't have teams that was somewhat close to them or even in a realm as them at all, right? Um, so when I really look at it, man, when it comes to this Boston Celtics and Lakers thing, I just think the blaring thing is 1976. When real hoopers became, came inside the league, when the league actually came mixed, they stopped winning for a very long time. Um, you know what I'm saying? They joined the party a little bit later in 2008, but for the last 16 years, they've been irrelevant. All right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead and run that poll right now. Here we go with round three, topic or topic three, round one. We got Damian Lillard versus Kyrie Irving. Who is more clutch? Uh, Jack, you just went for the second round. So, Dion, it is back on you to go first and make right. a compelling case on who you think is more clutch. You got it. All right. So, Dame versus Kyrie, this, this is not close. I'm so sad this is even a conversation. Uh, but let's talk about this season. Let's start with Dame off the rip. Dame put up from 30 feet in overtime to ice the game against the Kings this season. Um, Dame was top three in clutch points this season with 139 points. But out of the top three, including Curry, DeMar, uh, and Dame, Dame had the best record of 23 and 14 in the clutch, right? So so this is an offseason for Dame. Let's talk about let's talk about Trailblazers Dame, right? So Dame led in clutch points in 2021 season. Since 2012, Dame made 10 game winners in the last five seconds with the score within five. This is first amongst all players inside the league right now. Um, Dame, since his rookie season, has hit more clutch threes than anyone. A clutch three is a, hit, a, a three hit within five uh, minutes and uh, within five points as well. This, this dude beats out Curry, LeBron, and obviously Kyrie Irving in that category. Um, nine times in NBA history, there has been a walk-off playoff buzzer beater. Dame has two of those. Only guy to match Dame and, and, and walk off buzzer beaters is, is Michael Jordan with two. So they're tied with the most buzzer beaters to walk off playoff in NBA history, right? And, and yeah, I'm talking about Dame in 2019, game five versus OKC. I'm also talking about the classic game in 2019, well, 2014, game six versus the Rockets. That basically made Dame as a clutch player he is today. Listen, Dame has shown nothing but clutchness his entire career. And, and honestly, has no sign of uh, slowing down either. So, those are a couple little facts for you about Dame Clutchness. All right, we got our first round with Dame. It's on you, Jack. You got Kyrie. Talk to us. So, both of those buzzer beaters that you just mentioned from Damian Lillard happened to come in the first round. And I look at Kyrie Irving's game winning three point shot in game seven of the NBA Finals over Stephen Curry. Mm -hmm as the most clutch shot in NBA history. And he also followed it up with something that nobody talks about, but it was arguably, it could have been the biggest poster dunk in the history of life that LeBron James, your guy, nearly throws down. I forget if it was on Draymond or somebody, but they get the foul. But in that moment, Kyrie Irving made an early play to make the play instead of kind of draining the clock more. He went early, took the risk, and made one of the best passes I've ever seen in clutch time. And leading up to that Kyrie Irving buzzer beater, not buzzer beater, Dame had the buzzer beaters. Kyrie Irving's game-winning three in game seven. I was watching it back a few nights ago just to really feel it again because I'm a Steph guy. I love Steph and Curry. And that shot, witnessing it in real time, and then watching the highlights again, it still haunts me to this day, but I grew a true appreciation for it because when I turned on the, the rerun, the highlights, it goes to about four minutes left in the game. Everyone's tired. The score is under 100 points each. Nobody could make a shot. Who was going to be the guy? And it was Kyrie Irving that basically hit the ballsiest shot in the history of basketball and beat the greatest team of all time in the 73-9 and nine Warriors. And they were then forced to acquire Kevin Durant the following year and essentially ruin the NBA. Ooh, Kyrie ruined the NBA. Mmm, big shots, big shots. Well... Dion, it's back on you. Round I'm, two. Happy, I'm happy that, you know what I'm saying, you mentioned Kyrie in the finals. I'm happy you mentioned Dane in the first round. 
because outside of Kyrie Irving playing with LeBron James, uh, he just played in the NBA Finals. And honestly, this year that he just got done playing was honestly flat out embarrassing. Three games this this year, this year we're talking about, three games he shot under 40%. Two games he shot 0% from three. He had another game he shot 17% from three. This is supposed to be the guy you, got, you just got done mentioning about that's unstoppable, you know what I'm saying, that's very clutch, and he can do it, you know, get the job done, right? And it's crazy because before the NBA Finals, Kyrie Irving was leading the playoffs in clutch points. He led, a, he led the, play, the entire playoff in clutch points, but he literally changed to a different guy uh, inside the NBA Finals, right? And honestly, this is not the first time we've seen this type of act from Kyrie Irving. Let's talk about the Boston, uh, the Boston Celtics versus Brooklyn Nets. You are a Boston Celtics fan, so you should know exactly what series I'm talking about. Kyrie Irving drops 39 in game one, and then for game two and three, he disappears. In game two, he shoots four for 13 from the field, 30% from the field. And how about game three when he goes six for 17, 35%, and 0 for 7 from three, that same as that game? That's ugly. I mean, he, he followed up a game four and had a decent game four, but my point is we're, 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 we're accustomed to seeing Kyrie Irving does do this in, in NBA history, right? Um, I feel like a lot of Dallas Mavericks fans were looking for Kyrie Irving to step up this series. Um, I told you guys a couple of weeks ago on the panel before the series started, I said Kyrie Irving doesn't have the goods. He's not going to be able to get a done with LeBron James, and that's exactly what happened. He, he shit the bed, literally. I think when you look at Kyrie Irving versus Damian Lillard, yeah, Dame has the 30-footer over Kyrie. There's no doubt about that. But you could argue Kyrie Irving is the best player with the basketball. Like, the the best. He's a magician with the ball. And if there's 10 seconds remaining on the clock and I need a guy to go make a play, regardless of if it's a 30-footer, a 10-foot layup, a one-handed lefty shot floater at the buzzer over the best player in the NBA, and Nikola Jokic, to me, I think Kyrie Irving, what he does as a magician, trumps Damian Lillard's shooting ability in this who's more clutch because it's not just about the shots. Maybe it is, and, and maybe it's about the buzzer beaters, but it's also about what do you do with one minute and 10 seconds left? What do you do in the clutchest moments, in the brightest lights? And I understand that, yeah, Kyrie Irving did not have a great NBA Finals, and he also didn't play well when you mentioned it was Celtics versus Nets. What's the common denominator in that one? He's playing against a really good team in the Boston Celtics, and he's got some nightmares because he used to play with them, and the fan base hates him and boos him every single time he gets the ball. I get all that. When you just take a step back and analyze the situation, to me, Kyrie Irving has been to championship after championship, and that has to say something. I get this isn't a who's a better player. I get this isn't who's won more, but – Winning has to speak to who's the more clutch player. And with Luka and LeBron carrying, it's been Kyrie as that clutch guy that they depend on. I'm sorry, Jack. I got to mute you. You over the time. It's back on you, Dion. But your time will start whenever you decide to start. Got it. Um, so first off, the last topic I have today, uh, it's been really fun. Um, I have Kyrie Irving's availability. You can't be clutch if you're not available, right? Since 2019, Kyrie Irving hasn't played over 60 games. Kyrie's incapability to stay healthy cost the Cavs in 2015. LeBron James took the Cavs to game six without Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving's available to stay healthy. Maybe we go to game seven. Or how about the Boston Celtics there? You already know what I'm talking about. 2018, Kyrie Irving, the Boston Celtics, LeBron James goes to, to game seven. Kyrie Irving's injured. He's not there. He's not available to perform in game seven. And they go on to lose to LeBron James. Listen, Kyrie needs to be on the court to have to be productive. He can't even be a clutch player if he's not available, right? And now, this is a couple of things for Dane versus Kyrie. Dane versus Kyrie in closeout games, Dane averages 28 to Kyrie's 23. That includes the 50 bomb versus OKC that Dane had in a closeout game. Dane has a higher true shooting in closeout games than Kyrie. Dane led his team in the playoffs, unlike the guy like Kyrie has never done. Um, you know, Kyrie's a great Robin, like you said, that's fine. Um, Dame is a top five clutchest player ever to ever exist in NBA history. Dame's top five. You can't name five guys who are clutching Dame. He has all the stats, right? And I understand Kyrie hit one of the best shots in NBA history, but Dame has done it more and has done it more consistently over time. Listen, Dame has changed what a good shot is. Go ask Paul George. Paul George knows. Dame showed you what, a, what any shot's possible in the clutch to hit a shot and anything's makeable when it comes to Damian Lillard. Chat, topic three, round three. You got it whenever you want it. You know, I hate to be repetitive about 
Kyrie shot in game seven against Golden State, but it lives in my memory forever. This is something that Steph Curry will never get over. And I think Paul George, has he gotten over the Dame shot? Maybe not. Maybe he wanted to get up on it a little bit sooner, but it was a first round matchup. This Kyrie Irving shot, the amount of weight it has on the history of basketball, you can't answer this question any differently than it's Kyrie Irving when you're asking who's more clutch. I get it. Damian Lillard is extremely clutch. But when you look at what Kyrie Irving has done, and I got cut off at my last point, but I was talking about how Kyrie's always been kind of the second option, right? You have LeBron James and Luka Doncic as the first option. In times, Kyrie Irving is the guy that's getting the ball. Actually, majority of the time, they're depending on Kyrie Irving late in games. Luka, so many times during this Dallas Maverick run that who the hell thought the Mavericks were going to get to the finals? I'm sure there's a decent amount of people out there, but it was consistently going to Kyrie Irving. Luka Doncic, the great player that he is, was giving up clutch time shots. Why? Because he has Kyrie Irving on his team. LeBron James, for so many years, was giving up clutch time shots. Why? Because Kyrie Irving is a better clutch time player than anybody in the history of the game. Period. Mm. There you have it, y'all. We just had a very intense debate from these two guys. Hey, man, it, clap it up for these guys back at home. Clap it up for Dion from Ohio and Jack Cody, man. Hey, run the poll. Run the poll. Fellas, it was a pleasure having you up here. I will catch you guys next time. Hey. Joy, wait, all right.